Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north, and I've got a few plant updates for you today following my Mammoth Grand Tour. I've written them down because I'll forget otherwise. We've got Oncidium Twinkle Cinnamon a mounting update, the continuing saga of the Lelia Anceps, the Nepenthes Hockeriana, which we didn't talk about uh, on the tour. Somebody's asked me about that, so I want to show that. The Rhynchostardis Celestis Alba with the rotting roots the floppy pelagonium and the missing zygopetalum which I missed out. So, let's get started. I just want to take you over here. My Oncidium Twinkle Cinnamon. I now have two mounted pieces, both mounted on driftwood. I've done my best to desalt them, but we'll, we'll see. I'll probably not do any more and see how these go. They've been soaking in a bucket, then they've been out in the rain for a week or two. So hopefully they'll be completely desalted. Just putting them in the bucket should have done it really. So that was the main piece. When I when I unpotted it and had a look at it, I mean the roots were all perfectly fine, but this one was completely separate. Uh, wasn't attached to the main rhizome at all. So I'm guessing it was just kind of stuck in the pot. So I thought, right, well I'll mount that separately and see how it gets on. Um, I'm getting better at using the twine now, the fishing line. I've learnt how to do a reef knot, thanks to uh, one of our other YouTubers, Incy. So that helped. It's the tying off at the end that's a little bit of a faff, but anyway. So that, that's two two new mounts that I've got there, even though it's the same plant. Uh, moving over to the Lelia Anceps. Still looking fantastic in flower, but the pseudo bulbs very shriveled um following on from what people have said from my uh, one of my videos on this i have contacted the seller uh, spice exotics and they said they were divisions and they thought they had roots on them but they, they've offered to uh, to refund me i'm going to get back to them because i want to see if they can send me a replacement because i stupidly left the box outside and uh, it's too wet to, to return it in that so we'll, we'll i'll update you on that the Rinca stylus celestis alba which had no roots, rather rude looking Rinca stylus. <laughs> so that seems to be the only little bit of root there that is still viable. So what I'm going to try, something I saw that Brad do, a bag and spag method. So I'm going to stick it in a bag, I'm going to put a little bit of sphagnum moss around it and see if it does begin to grow roots. I'm not quite sure whether it's a warm grower or not, so that's something that I need to have a look at. And the other quick update was the pelagonium. When I unpotted this, I mean the roots seem fine. I didn't want to, you know, they're not they're not like orchids. I didn't want to kind of take all the uh, the media off. The, it, the root ball felt fine, other than being very dry. So I've wet it all now. So it's definitely not underwatered or overwatered but it's been overnight and it is still very floppy so i'm not really quite sure i think i might have no option just put it down there again to have another look at it i might have no option other than to take all the media off and see if there's something going on with the root ball um, another another option just just talking it through is to give it a water with some uh, vine weevil killer and see if that does anything i think i might try that actually uh, they tend to only come in the springtime, but you know it's it's not a it's not like a, a natural environment in here. It is warmer, so it may be that they've hatched earlier. So it's another day here. So I'm just going to have a little quick uh, chat about this pelagonium again. I've had it out of its pot again, and it just there's nothing wrong with the roots. It doesn't appear to be anyway, unless it's just starting. The, I mean, the root ball is really firm, and I'm kind of loath to do anything with it, you know, in terms of pulling it all to bits without actually destroying it at this point or without actually seeing any, you know, major issue. A lot of these leaves are still quite rigid and firm and some of the new ones are rigid and firm. So I've opted to pull off the floppy leaves. I don't know if that'll make any difference. We'll see. I didn't get this last year, so... I think it's just a case of keeping my eye on it, see what it does with a, a bit of increased light that I've put it in a better spot now. 
give it a bit more air round round the leaves and let's see what happens so that's an update on the polygonium we have the continuing saga of the <coughs> Lelia Anceps. It's looking brilliant, I have to say, considering it's so so bad down at base. Such a wonderful colour. But if we go down here, I've just sprayed it so you can see it's uh, a little bit wet. The bulbs are very desiccated. Now, it's strange really, it's really quite interesting. The public opinion, should we say, uh, in the comments on my video about this is actually quite mixed um, surprisingly I mean what everybody agrees agrees on is yeah it doesn't look well the pseudobulbs are all shriveled and there are no new growths the only good thing it's got going for it is this spike on this this lovely set of flowers at the end so many people seem to be suggesting that you know it's not really worth the money and I should send it back uh, some people are saying, well, look, you've got to be patient, it will grow roots. Other people are saying that they have one and it does this every year. You know, it, it, every year you let it dry out, the, <clears throat> the pseudobulbs shrink a little bit, and then when it comes back again, when the temperatures begin to rise, it plumps up again and it produces another spike. The question for me really is, you know, have I got my money's worth? Have I been... Uh, have I been done, so to speak, in inverted commas? I don't. I don't think they've done it on purpose. You know, I've had lots and lots of plants from Spice Exotics, and a lot of them have been really excellent. I've had now two Cattleya types that have not had roots on them. Uh, again, I can't really expect them to dig into every pot to, to have a look when the when they're selling at scale. I think in this case you can quite clearly see that the bulbs are shriveled i think maybe they should have had a look but you know at the end of the day uh, they're happy to take it back they, they're not thinking it's going to be worth throwing away and like i say people have said to me that it will come back so i got onto them at first they've offered me a refund i've got back to them and said look i want to you know i want to lay your concepts can i have a replacement and they've agreed straight away actually to send me a better looking replacement but unfortunately with no spike but that doesn't matter obviously I want the plant to survive and um, I don't have the patience to wait a couple of years unfortunately I mean I may well end up waiting a couple of years for it to, to spike but I would just like a plant that looks like it's doing something you know it's got eyes on it that's beginning to grow it's got plump pseudo bulbs uh, something that looks healthy and looks like it's going to do something for me in future uh, so I think I've got quite a good deal out of it really. I'm going to send this one back. I'm going to have to cut the spike off. Uh, on Monday they sent, they're sending me a new one and I'm going to send this one back in that box. I also, because I'm, this is just the kind of person I am, I also ordered another one uh, just to show there were no hard feelings. Had to be done. And you know they're, they're doing quite well out of me aren't they really and, I, and I'm, still, I'm still going to continue to buy from them. It's just the Cattleyas really, I, I just don't seem to be getting much luck with the, the Cattleya types. Okay, I'll just take you over here, move this out of the way. So this is an Nepenthes hookeriana, and as you can see over here, it's in the propagator. The propagator is on, and I'm just going to take that off. I did an unboxing of this way back. I have to say it wasn't a particularly popular video, but I mean, it, you know, it's not, a, it's not a stunning plant, is it really? But... I'm just feeling now that you know my, my hand is quite warm holding this and I had left it over over there on the shelf and when I bought this I didn't really look to see well I didn't at all look to see what kind of a grower it was and as it turns out it's a lowland Nepenthes so it likes quite warm temperatures on the 12 degrees it was going down to over there sometimes 11 was just too cold for it and it began to show some cold damage since i put it in the propagator it's beginning to grow quite vigorously well vigorously for nepenthes anyway uh, this is a brand new picture this is all since it's gone into the propagator uh, i can't remember if some of these are brand new you can see there's a new growth in the middle that there wasn't there's a couple of new ones down there from like a basil shoot so I know a couple of these are going brown now, but it doesn't seem to be suffering. I think I've saved it just about. 
it's not it's still not getting what it really wants you know it wants like a difference in temperature it wants to go up to about 25 during the day but i can't i can't match that you know it's four degrees here it's been raining all day and it's very it feels very very cold you know another degree or two and we'd have snow so you know to, to actually keep a lowland growing nepenthes in this kind of climate i think we're doing pretty well so i'll stick that back that's the nepenthes for coriana obviously if that gets much bigger then i won't be able to do this so uh, you know at, at the at some point next year i'm hoping these will be in place and i'll have my partition across there oh yeah rinca stylus celestis alba so again i've had another look at that and it is a warm to hot growing orchid so i saw brad do something he called a bag and spag method which i've not seen before and anything like a vanda and this is this is a vanda type uh, if it's no roots on it what he did was he put it in a in a bag plastic bag uh, to keep the humidity in put a bit of moss in there and just pretty much left it now i've not got a bag big enough but i have got this um propagator here so this does the same kind of thing bit of moss in there and i've given it a spray and i'm just going to see what happens it, that one root which was actually out of the pot does seem to be viable the others the ones that were inside the bark were most definitely not viable they'd all rotted off so i thought well we'll, we'll see what happens i only did this ooh, 10 minutes ago and you can see already it's beginning to get condensation on the inside of the uh, the clear lid there so it's worth a try let's see what see what happens so that's that and what was the... i forgot to see this just show this on my little tour little tour i'm sorry it went on so long but you know tour is a tour this did begin to show signs of rotting at some point uh, there was new growth in there it rotted this is when i first got it there was another new growth somewhere else i ended up cutting it off uh, the flowers were still fantastic but when i looked it up uh, even though it likes to be moist it likes humidity at lower temperatures it can rot and since i found that out i've been much more uh, lighter on the watering and a bit more careful to make sure that it dries out first but good news good news can you see down there a little bit of green there is a new green growth coming i'm guessing it's a new pseudo bulb so i've not killed it i'm happy with that and i can just also see there there's something else poking through that sheath there as well probably a root so it's not gone um i'm hoping that this time next year we'll have some blooms as nice as we saw during the some well no autumn period and finally the cattleya still nothing to show yet but of course it's not been very long um we've got the eye there does that look any bigger to you <laughs> there's another one there and there's another one there it's still early i'm just giving it a spray of water just at the bottom there just to make sure that it, it, it the rhizome keeps damp or gets a little bit of dampness i'm certainly not watering the whole thing so that's it a little few updates for you hope you enjoyed them and uh, if you did give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed already please do and i will see you on the next one bye